Hi, this is Chris from Needlepointers.com, and today I'd like to show you how to cut and assemble the Crazy Quilt Block using the AccuQuilt Crazy Quilt Block die. I will be cutting the pieces for the Crazy Quilt Block with my AccuQuilt Go Big Cutter and the 10 inch Crazy Quilt die. This die is very large and will only work with the Go Big and the Studio 2. There is also a 6 inch Crazy Quilt die that will work with the Go. Go Big and Studio 2. Since this die is very large, make sure you purchase the appropriately sized mat if you don't already have one. A 14 inch by 16 inch cutting mat is needed for this die. Of course, I didn't realize that this die was larger than my other dies, so I had to order and wait for the new mats to arrive before using mine. Both the 6 inch and 10 inch finished size blocks are assembled in the same way. So these instructions will work if you have either size die. This die comes with the letters printed on the foam. These letters help with the assembly of the block. AccuQuilt also provides a PDF document to help you with assembly of this block. It is important to assemble this block in the correct order. I will include a link to this PDF on the written page for this tutorial. So if you look at this page, you will see that the ABC is assembled first, then DE, F and G and H I are assembled. After that, the J is added to the H and I piece, and we start working backwards around adding the F and G, the D and E, and then finally the A, B, and C. It looks complicated, but once you make the block, you will find it's easy because the die cuts off the dog ears, which makes it easy to align the pieces. If you would like to see a full written tutorial on this block, please click the link in the description of this video to go to our webpage. On that page, you will find a written photo instructions and links to the Crazy Quilt dies and this PDF tutorial. We are an AccuQuilt affiliate, so we will earn a commission from any purchases you make through our links. This is the perfect block to use up some of your fabric scraps. I sorted my scraps by colors or themes to start. Iron your scraps to make sure they will lay flat. Take your scraps and lay them across sections of the block. Make sure the scrap pieces cover the entire light gray section of the pieces that you want to cut. They can overlap a bit and some may be big enough to go across more than one piece on the die. Once you have your fabrics across the block, place them at and Send it through the cutter. Then you can remove the extra fabrics. And then what I'll do is move these off to the side in the same orientation they're in now and cut the next set until I get a stack of all the shaped pieces. And then I can mix them up and create my blocks scrappy using scraps from my stash. There are 10 sections to the Crazy Quilt block, so to make it easiest and also to ensure there are no duplicate fabrics on the same block, I will make the blocks with sets of 10 fabrics. If you are making a quilt and need more than 10 blocks, then you may want to use more than 10 fabrics. I have cut 13 and a half inch by 13 and a half inch blocks from my 10 fabrics. Stack five fabrics on top of one another and place the mat over top and send it through the cutter. AccuQuilt recommends that you only cut five layers at a time with the stock. For the best cutting results, position the fabric on the lengthwise grain as it's going under the roller. Move the fabrics in the same orientation over to a work surface. It's easiest to keep them facing the same way as they are on the die. I'll do the same with the second set of fabrics. Stack the second set of fabrics onto the top of the first set, keeping them all in order. Once you have all 10 fabrics cut and stacked, we can now shuffle the fabrics. To make sure you don't have any duplicate fabric on each block, we will take some off the top of each stack and put them underneath the stack. I will leave the center or eye as it is and not shuffle it. Starting with the A stack, I will move the top fabric to the bottom of the stack. 
Then I'll move the top two on the B to the bottom. Then the top three on the C. The top four on the D. The top five on the E. The top six on the F. The top seven on the G. Eight on the H. And I'll move the top nine or just move the bottom one to the top on the J. Now, if you look at all the fabrics for each block, there will be no duplicates. If you're using more than 10 fabrics in your project, you can cut the next set of 10 fabrics. Keep them separate for now and stack them separately. Then shuffle them just as we did this first set. Then you'll have two stacks of fabrics. Swap some of the stacks of fabric between the two sets. Then you'll have blocks that have a mix of all 20 fabrics. I recommend swapping four to five stacks between the two sets of blocks. So before we assemble the blocks, we really need to label them. I found out the hard way when I assembled these blocks. Notice that there are several duplicated fabrics. When I was chain piecing the sections together, I didn't pay attention closely to how I cut the chains apart and how I stacked the pieces to make sure I kept them in the original order. So I ended up with blocks that have more duplicates in them than I intended. This is why I suggest that you label the sections and number them before you start to assemble them together. To label and number, I use some of these flower pins. I also use these when I'm working on machine embroidery projects, so I have these on hand. I will take the letter pins and put one in the top of each block. I will orient the heads of the pins towards the edges of the block so that they will stay out of the way when um, sewing the blocks together. So once I have all these pins in here, I will know that the top block is the number one. Next, I will take numbered pins and put them in one of the pieces for each of the assembled sections and number them from two through 10 down the block. So I have two, three, four, five, six, and so on down the block. And that labels each of the blocks that we're going to be assembling. I will place the number of pins in A, D, F, and I. This is because these three will be assembled together and these two, then these two, these two. And then we will start putting this on and putting the pieces all together. So by having the numbered pins in one of each section, then we'll be able to keep track and make sure we keep them all in order as we're assembling all of the blocks together. If you don't have numbered or lettered pins, you can purchase some through the page for this tutorial. You can also write letters and numbers on pieces of tape and stick them to the pieces. Now we are ready to chain piece the blocks. Here are the pieces of the block shown how they will be assembled. A, B, and C go together first, then D and E, F and G, H and I. So we work our way around this way and then we work backwards. So after H and I are put together, J is added on, then the F and G unit is added, the D and E unit is added, and finally the ABC unit is added to finish the block. Starting with the AB, sew them together matching the edges and the corners. I'm using my quarter inch foot and sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. I have a straight stitch and white thread in both the top and the bottom. Chain piece all of the AB units together. Next, go back to the beginning of your chain and where you have the A, B pins and sew C to the other side of B, matching the corners and the sides again. If it's easier, you can leave the chain connected together or you can cut it apart. 
If you separate them, be sure to stack them in the correct number order. Next, I'll cut apart these, the blocks, and making sure I keep them in order. So this is 10, 9, and keep going down and stacking them in the correct order. Next, you can finger press or iron the seams to one side or the other. It doesn't matter which side you press the seams to because there are no interlocking seams on this block. But keep in mind, if you're ironing with your flower pins in, do not iron on top of your flower pins because I found that the flower pins will melt a little bit and the writing on my pins even came off onto my fabric. So be careful when you're ironing with flower pin. Next, I'm going to chain piece the D and E pieces together in the same way using chain piecing. Then I will sew together the F and G into a unit and the H and I into a unit. After I finish sewing each of these units together, I will cut them apart and finger press or iron them. Now we have the main sections all sewn together and ironed. Next, we will work our way back around the block putting the pieces together. First, sew the J onto the H and I block. Then add the FG onto the block. Next, add the D and E onto the block. And finally, add the ABC onto the block to complete the block. The blocks are finished. Now the blocks are ready to be used in a quilt, table runner, or other project. We hope you enjoyed learning how to use your AccuQuilt Go to cut and assemble the crazy quilt block. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Like and share our videos, and if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to our channel so you won't miss future videos. Visit our website, needlepointers.com, for lots of other quilting tutorials and free projects. While you're there, sign up for our weekly newsletter so you won't miss new tutorials. Happy quilting!